Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hood Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today, let's find out what's been on the hook. A lot of things have been on the hook. As you can tell, I have a finished object that I'm wearing today, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit late getting back to y'all. I had to spend an extra day on the road, and so I drove in late last night, and I thought I would come out here and put a video out on Wednesday. I know it's a little bit late, and I apologize for that. But thank you for your patience. I hope you got my post yesterday because I did send down a notice that I'd be a little bit late this week on my video. And I hate to be late, but um, it couldn't be avoided. So here I am today and I have lots and lots to talk about. So let's get started. Today I have a finished object, several works in progress, a giveaway that I want to talk about, and a video from Joe of Joe for Totes, who's going to show us a beautiful new project bag and tell you a little bit about her plans for the near future. So stay tuned for that. Joe will be uh, with us at the very end of our videos. So we look forward to hearing from her. First of all, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a brand new article of clothing and I made this while I was on my little jaunt away from my office. And I had started it already. This is made from Scarfy yarn. This is a Lion Brand product. It's called Scarfy. And this one is Denim Navy is the colorway. Isn't that gorgeous? I always love this. I um, was actually gifted three skeins of this from Doris at Rose Cottage Crochet. I believe that's the name of her YouTube channel. I hope I got that right. And... Um, I didn't think I'd have enough to make it, so I bought some more. So I had six skeins of this, and I used two skeins to make this weekender, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, I used probably 10 yards off of this third skein. So I used two skeins and just a smidgen of a third. And you can tell this is where I tried to pull the center pull out. Lion Brand, I don't like the way they do their skeins. I love Lion Brand, but um, Red Heart has always beat them out as far as getting that skein beginning out of the center of the skein. I don't like pulling from the side because it flips around, flops around, and as you know, it's a little bit more difficult to crochet that way and to knit. So I try to pull out the um, inside end of the yarn, the pull end, and I, sometimes it comes right out and sometimes I dig around and look at this. I tried it on this end and then I tried it on this end. I know there are ways to do it. I did figure out though if I could work my way through on both sides with my fingers and meet my fingers in the middle, sometimes I could feel in there that there might be a loose, a loose piece that doesn't pull as hard and then I pull that out and sometimes that works as well. You might give that a try if you have a, a pesky skein that won't uh, pull out. But anyway, that's beside the point. I um, didn't use much of the scarf yarn, maybe two skeins and a little bit more of the third. So I wanted to tell you that. This is the Weekender pattern on my Etsy shop. It's um, an easy crochet. It's not difficult at all to crochet. And let me show you the blue denim and navy that I made. I uh, originally made this out of Erin Fashion Yarn by King Cole. I, I put the link in my description box many times on my videos while I was talking about making the Weekender. And that is a wonderful yarn as well. But this Scarfy yarn is a bulky yarn. So it's a size 5 and I really enjoyed working with it. I used a K 6.5 millimeter hook to make this Weekender out of the bulky yarn. So this Scarfy is a size 5 and the crocheting went very, very quickly. So you can make one of these in just a few days and not even work that hard at it. <laughs> so I wanted to show you that first, but let me stand up and show you what this looks like. It's a little bit different from my original. Here I am in my new Weekender. I wanted to show this to you. This is the Scarfy Yarn Weekender and I'm wearing this with a navy turtleneck and a black belt at the waist because I wanted to bring out the dark, dark color. I have black booties on, as you can see, my black boots, short black boots, and some black jeans, and a black belt. And I have a navy turtleneck with it. So I'm kind of combining my two colors here. And then I topped it off with the Weekender, which is done in a dark, dark navy, which is almost like black and a dark blue so that matched the turtleneck and I tried to get everything to go together so just to kind of give it a uh, fluid look but you can see I still have the um, 
slits on the side. I made the slits, but I did not make this as long as the other one. This is about mid-thigh. The other was way down here. This is actually just below my hip. It's really not that, that long. And I'll show you the back of it. It's right there. So it's a little bit lower than my hip, maybe a couple of inches. The other weekender was quite a bit longer and a lot wider. This one I did not make as wide. Um, I sized it down just a little bit to get a different look, but I do like the original. It's long, it's flowy, and this one is a little bit shorter, a little bit more casual, and just wearing it over jeans, it's great. It's got a little bit of wool in it, the scarfy yarn does, so it makes it very, very comfortable, but it's not in your way. My arms are free to work, and I just wear a, a light t-shirt turtleneck over um, my skin and that way it keeps me warm but I don't have to have something heavy wool on my arms. Now I am from Tennessee so we don't have huge winters like y'all do up north but this is a nice around the house um, third piece that you can wear and it keeps you warm on your core. So I just thought I would show this to you. Again I'll turn around and let you see it. It's really really comfortable. It's an easy crochet. So you might want to try this pattern with some yarn you have in your stash or maybe grab uh, three skeins of Scarfy and you'll have it done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little modeling session. I just wanted to show you how it looked on. I did not change much of anything except the length and the width. So those are measurements that you take and you decide how big to make your weekender. There are no stitch counts. It's also still done in a V stitch and the, the front edging, I, I made the um, edging a four row window plus the base row which I describe in the pattern but it, it changes up the stitch pattern just a little bit for the front and I took it all the way around the sides in the bottom of the back and everywhere just once so that it kind of uh, mimics that uh, big edging that you put on the front but you can uh, mimic it on the hem and you can mimic it on the sleeve now I did um, a row of window here I didn't do more than one. I just did one row of window. Well, actually I did two, excuse me. I did two rows of window and a base row here. So it was um, just my choice and what I wanted to do to, to pull those design elements together. So I hope you enjoy it. It's an easy crochet, as I said, so you might want to give that a try. And I'm also extending the offer code and I will send an email out this afternoon which will tell you what the offer code is. And this will be a, an offer code on all my patterns, but specifically talking about the Weekender. So I want to uh, send that out to you this afternoon and you can use that. If you haven't bought the Weekender pattern already, you can grab that or any other patterns that you want from my Etsy shop. Now let's look at this month's Knit Crate. I am a Knit Crate subscriber. I have a monthly subscription to Knit Crate and they send me two hanks of beautiful, beautiful luxury yarn every month and I get to try them out. I, I can order more if I want to on the website and get it at a great discount. So I do like Knit Crate. This is not a sponsored video at all. I always order this. It, I don't have to, it's automatic. I don't have to go out and order it. But I do love getting the monthly subscriptions. This month is the Vita Lana Tweety Sheep. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. Now this is a, a yarn called Spiced Cranberry. It's 90% wool, 10% Donegal Neps. I didn't have time to look that up, but I'm assuming that is the uh, little pieces of other wools that are in the, in the yarn. You can see them right there, really easy to see. But this is a cranberry colored yarn, and it's an Aran weight, or basically a worsted weight. It's pretty fat, 150 yards on the hank. Hand wash gently, dry flat, and the suggested, um, the suggested hook is a K hook, which is the same hook that I used to make my Weekender. So this is the hook that's uh, suggested for this particular yarn, and I love it. It's beautiful. I would order more of it. I've got so many sweater quantities, though I don't know if I should. <laughs> Probably shouldn't, but it is a beautiful color, and I got two hanks of these in my monthly subscription of Knit Crate. Now they also send patterns, and they give you uh, a link on the web to go out and look at the patterns that are uh, suggested for this particular month. I don't think I'll be making any of those, so I didn't bring it up, but um, they always send a card out. It's really cute. They've got a little talk about, you know, what season it is and what kind of patterns they are, what kind of wool that they used in this particular monthly crate. So I like that. They also sent a uh, post-it pad 
with their name on the top and it says my project ingredients so it's a project post-it that you can stick on to um, maybe your project bag or your planner maybe you should put it on your planner and say i want to do this project this month and you can take this little pad and put a slip on to your planner and you can take a look at that when you get to that month you'll see that you wanted to do this particular project you know you can use it any way you want to you can even write a grocery list on it if you want to <laughs> but i do like it it's cute and uh, they always send a little extra in their monthly subscription so that is the knit crate monthly subscription for this month now for the last few weeks i've been talking about the beautiful you pattern and i love beautiful you top that i made last year out of uh, beautiful you yarn and I also used beautiful you yarn to make the winterberry pattern which I released a couple three weeks ago and I decided to make another beautiful you I'm going to try to make it in three different yarn weights the first one was beautiful you that's a size two yarn size two very very small but I love the way it came out I really enjoyed wearing that all summer this summer so I decided to make it in an Aran weight yarn now the Aran weight yarn that I chose or the worsted weight size four is Chloe Golden Sunset this is from Hobby Lobby it's yarn B yarn and this yarn is 70% wool 30% viscose this is a suggested J hook but I actually used an I hook which is a 5.5 millimeter hook to uh, crochet this particular top that I'm making so I'm making a beautiful you in Chloe and, and Crystal wanted to model it so I'm bringing it over here I finished the front I'm almost through with the back so I've pinned it all on to Crystal so she could show you how beautiful it turned out here's Crystal modeling my new beautiful you pattern and this is a really nice yarn it's turned out to be really nice I've, I've shown this a couple of weeks in a row and if you'll notice all the sorry crystal if you noticed all the stripes going back and forth here i'm not a stripey person but these stripes actually blend in so beautifully with each other you can't really see where they start and stop if you'll notice that it's a beautiful look and i really like it now you can see right here there's a little bit of a abrupt change there but it's so seldom you don't really notice it now this is the neckline that i did for the original beautiful you pattern it's a kind of a wide neckline and um, i have my stitch markers on here where i've decreased and i have to write those into the pattern of course but i also made the sleeves a little bit longer than the original um, and this is where the back comes up in the very back right here this is how far I've gone with the back. It's starting to sag just a little bit. But this is how much I've done for the back. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm almost done. And it's beautiful stripes, just like the front. Very beautiful. And there are dye lots for Chloe, so be careful if you're buying Chloe. Be sure that the dye lots are the same. When I bought my fifth yarn ball of this, because I had four and I wasn't sure I would have enough, so I went on my trip and I found a Hobby Lobby and bought another... Uh, skein of this yarn bee Chloe and when I got home I realized the lot number was different the dye lot was different from the original four that I had bought so I may not have to dive into this fifth one I don't know but it to me it doesn't look that much different but you never know when you add one so if I add this I'll probably do it for the edging around the sleeve the neckline and the bottom and so I won't have to uh, worry about the dye lot so much but I don't want to start it right here and you know have it just uh, look very obvious that it's a different dye lot so that is the yarn I'm using this is the pattern I love this I have actually uh, installed eight inches of ease in this but it's going to be a, a very nice sweater and I didn't make the the sleeves quite as wide as I did the uh, the pattern that I was showing you before it was called the winterberry and I was making short sleeves and I made them too wide here they were just they were almost to here they were just way too wide so I may end up taking that whole thing out <laughs> I don't want to throw away the yarn because it's a very very expensive yarn uh, that I got on sale but I do love the yarn this is the beautiful you though in this particular yarn so just wanted to show this to you now I will be finishing this pretty soon hopefully we'll be wearing this next Monday hopefully and I'll get this taken care of this week and maybe get the pattern written for you because a lot of people have asked me about this for over a year and I apologize for not getting this pattern out 
but I will do that. Now, let me show you another version of this that I'm making out of a DK weight yarn. This beautiful you is living in my bumblebee bag that Joe, Joe for totes made me a while back. Really love it. I just love this bag. It's a perfect size too. Now, there is a larger bag that I'll be showing you later, but right now, this is a really great bag for this particular project. It's got good pockets in it. They're clear. You can see through them. And I want to show you the, the yarn that I'm using here. This is a, a knit crate yarn that came, I don't know, a month or two ago. And I really liked it. I really did like this one. So I thought I would order another three skeins of it. And I'm still waiting for those. And, you know, if I was really frugal and really thinking ahead, I probably wouldn't have started this until I had all the skeins of yarn that I needed because what if they write me and say, gee, we ran out, we didn't have any more, so here's your money back. You know, then I would be halfway through a sweater and not have the yarn for it. But I went ahead and did it anyway because, you know, I always throw caution to the wind. I don't really worry too much about what's going to happen. I do try to plan my projects though. I do try to plan my projects. So this is the DK weight beautiful U pattern and this is as far as I've gotten. It's probably about maybe 10 or 12 inches. I worked on this a little bit on my trip, not too much, but I do have a decorative edge right around here. It's really pretty in the solid color. Now I did this in the Chloe yarn as well and you can't see it as well there, but you can see it on this solid color yarn. This is more of a solid color yarn. Um, in fact, it really is a solid color yarn. There isn't much tonal difference in there, but I do like how this is turning out. So this is going to be a beautiful U pattern as well. I did not put eight inches of ease in here. I used six inches of ease. So I used an inch and a half on each end of this fabric. And then I will do the same thing on the back. So this will not be as blousy as that, but I wanted to make it a little bit different. So that's what I'm doing here. I have two skeins. I've used this much of this skein right here for this particular piece. So I'm looking for that knit crate yarn. They said they would send it to me and it wasn't here when I got back home yesterday and I'm a little bit concerned, but I don't want to be. They're usually very, very good about sending me everything they say they're going to send me. Not sponsored video, of course, not sponsored, but this is my beautiful you in the DK weight. So we'll see how this turns out. Another project that I'm working on is my Touch of Granny, and I haven't really proceeded as far as I wanted to on this, but this is what I have done so far. Now, this is going to be the front of the sweater now. The front of the sweater is not going to be all these squares, but it will be incorporating some of these squares in the front, some in the back and some on the sleeve. So it's not going to be all over granny squares. And I don't like to call these granny squares. These are really motifs because there are no triad stitches in these particular granny squares. Well, I call it a granny square. <laughs> I didn't mean to. But this is what that looks like. It's kind of a, let me get it up here where you can see it. There's the front. And it's a double crochet around a, um, a contrast center and contrast uh, lines that they're crocheted together with contrast yarn. So this is uh, an example of what you can do with motifs. You can make the uh, uh, crochet purse or bag out of this. You can do all kinds of things with these beautiful motifs and there are lots of different patterns for motifs but I came up with this just very easy design. It's not anything difficult at all. I had 20 of these that I whipped up for the entire sweater and I've locked together eight of them for the front, I'll do eight for the back, and there'll be two on each sleeve. So I'm excited about this one. I haven't worked as hard on this as I have the beautiful you because I wanted to get it out the door. I know that y'all were looking for it, and um, I haven't done enough work on it to suit me. So this is my touch of granny that will be coming out, you know, in a month or two. I'm not really sure when that's going to come out, but um, that's a project that I worked on a little bit this week. Now let's move on to the giveaway portion of my program. First of all, I want to say whoever won the Crochet Surprise Box, which uh, had the name Wyoming Whips, I have not heard from you. Please send me your mailing address and I will get this off to you right away. I have sent you a couple of notices on your comments to my YouTube videos and I still haven't received an answer. If I have and I missed it, I'm sorry. Please send it to me again, but I don't have your address. I need to send that off to you. That's the only giveaway gift that is sitting over here waiting to be sent out. I send a lot of giveaway gifts out before I um, 
left on a, a trip last week, and I wanted to make sure they they got in the mail and got to y'all. So, and I've received a couple of acknowledgments that you did get those. So that's good. Now, this week we are giving away two different gifts. The first gift is Quilter's World, and the key word on this was quilt. This is the newest version of Quilter's World. It is the winter of 2021. Beautiful, beautiful patterns. I showed a couple of these in my last, uh, like two videos ago, and one of them was the Christmas Bells quilt, and I had some comments about that. That's a beautiful, beautiful quilt with bells on them. You know, it's a Christmas quilt, so you have to get cracking on this if you're going to make one, but I do love that. It's so beautiful. And then the snowman stack pill. I showed that one to you as well. That's really a cute pattern. Um, it's unusual because it's not a sideways pillow and it's not a square pillow. It's a vertical pillow that's a little bit taller than it is wide. So I really thought that was cute. And the snowmen are stacked on each other. There are three of them there. And they're stacked on top of each other. I thought that was so cute. Now, the Quilters World uh, magazine will be given to someone who put in their comments the word quilt. So I will select a winner here in just a minute. The second giveaway gift I have this week are the Prim hooks. And these are wonderful hooks. I've heard lots of people raving about these. These are not good for Jeannie's hand. Jeannie's hand is too small. My fingers are not long enough to use this and stay off the barrel. Now, the barrel is where the stitches go. And for me, it's not good to climb up onto the barrel. I just, it's too slick and I really would rather stay back on the rubber handle. So I, uh, these are not good for me. So I'm going to give these away to a lucky subscriber this week. And the, the key word for this was prim, P-R-Y-M. And if you put that in your comment, you'll be in the running for this gift. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these two gifts this week. Here we are at the computer and this is October 18th's URL right there and the word was quilt that we want to use so let's go in here and let's find out how many people had the word quilt in their comment we're looking right down here and it tells us how many comments had that word and there were 69 so 69 people signed up for the quilting magazine let's go over here and find out who our winner is so let's go down here and we want to start finding out how many people were looking for that particular quilt magazine. Melissa Saylor. Melissa Saylor. I never heard of Prim Hooks before. She's also in the running for the, the Prim giveaway. But we are also seeing, like, here's the word quilt. So, Melissa, Melissa Saylor, you are the winner of the quilt magazine, Quilter's World, this week. Congratulations. Now, let's go over here. And we're going to change this word to prim, and that is P-R-Y-M. So we're going to change that word to prim and scroll down here and see how many comments had that word in there. And that would be 224. So 224 people are in the running for the prim hook. So let's find out who wins the prim hooks today. And that would be Tammy K. Stressless Joy. Tammy K, Stressless Joy. And there's her word right there, Prim, P-R-Y-M. So she has won the Prim Hooks. Tammy, congratulations. Both winners, please send me your mailing address so I can get these off to you in the mail. Congratulations again to the winners. I'd like to show you all one more whip that I have going on. A lot of you have asked me about the Persian Tiles project that I have going on. It's an Afghan kit that I bought from Mary Maxim. Love this kit. The pattern was designed by Janie Crow. It's a beautiful, beautiful tiles kit. It's not all granny squares. These are beautiful motifs that are done in hexagonal form. Uh, that's a six-sided form. And so when I bought the Afghan kit, I decided I was going to finish it. I know I was going to finish it, and I took the summer off because I was um, designing patterns for summertime, and I didn't want to stop. So I thought I would continue on with this Persian Tiles project while I was on my trip. So I took my beautiful new Joe for Totes bag that she made for me. Gorgeous bag, huge bag. This is a huge bag and it will hold an afghan no problem and probably a couple of sweater projects as well. So what I did was I continued on with my Persian tiles project and let me show you how much I've gotten done. Now this is done with a G hook which is the purple hook and that is a 
4.0 millimeter crochet hook. Occasionally you drop down to an E hook for a couple of things, but really most of it's done with a G hook. It is not for a strict beginner, but it can be done by an advanced beginner. Um, so here are some of the things that I finished. I finished round eight for all of the tiles, and that is this last row right here. And there are four tiles in this particular color scheme, and I have this marked right here, so ignore that. But this is the color scheme of this particular Persian tile. Beautiful color scheme, and you stop right here on row eight with a beautiful uh, dark pink, dusty rose, they call it, edging that goes around these little fans right here. So each fan is a different color, as you can see there and there, but the edgings are the same color. It just pulls them together so beautifully. Now I have four of those that I have finished. Row eight, round eight. That's all. <laughs> just round eight. Um, this is the second color scheme, and that's what this one looks like. This is very beautiful as well, and the last round, round eight, is done in this blue color in this cadet blue, I believe it is. So it's a blue color. This is the color scheme for that. This is the other one. So you can kind of see the difference there. Just a slight difference, not too much. All right, and so I did all of round eight on those particular uh, tiles. I, then I did round eight on the eight tiles that I have that are this color scheme, and they're the main color scheme that I did the original one. I did a whole Persian tile just to see what it would look like. And now I'm on row eight on this one as well. So I finished row eight on all of these tiles. Now the original tile, let me dig that out for you because it's just so gorgeous. I wanted to show this to you. This is the original tile. This is the, t the entire tile all crocheted up in this one particular uh, color scheme right there. That's the same color scheme. And I'm only to this row right about here. This is row eight. There's another row and another row. And then there's a triangle set of crochet stitches there and then a couple more rows until you finish this one. But that's what it looks like when it's all finished. So I keep this as inspiration because I did take all of the color that they sent me and I used it to create this one tile to kind of go by, to kind of get a look at. But I have finished the entire row eight or round eight on all of my tiles. There are 16 tiles here and actually there are 15 because that was the 16th one, the, the completed one there. But I wanted to show you that I am making some progress. I was really proud of myself for finishing that because honestly it's a huge project but if you do it one round at a time it does make it quite easy. So I wanted to show you the progress that I've made on that because because in the last video we talked about my reaching my milestone of 11,000 subscribers and without y'all I could have never done that of course. So my um, gift to you is to a, a lucky subscriber will win the Persian Tiles Afghan kit and here it is. Here it is. Now, if you'll go back on my video, and I'll put it at the end of this video actually on the screen, and you can just click it. You go back and sign up for this particular Persian Tiles Afghan, which is the gift to my subscribers for my 11,000 subscriber milestone that I've reached. Now, to sign up for this particular beautiful gift, this Persian Tiles Afghan kit, then go to my video from October 25th and I will put a link to that at the end of this video so be sure to click on that if you haven't watched it and use the keyword to sign up for the uh, Persian Tiles Afghan that I'm giving away next Monday that's November 8th so be sure you sign up before then and you'll be in the running for the Persian Tiles Afghan throw by Mary Maxim and designed by Janie Crow so be sure to do that at the end of this video Okay, as promised, I want to show you a video from Jo for Totes. Um, she does beautiful project bags and she creates these on her own and creates them custom for every customer. So it's really nice to have a custom bag made in the fabric that you want, exactly the way you want it, with the pockets you want and everything. So she's going to describe a brand new bag called a Victorian bag and it's a beautiful bag. Jo, know that I love the Victorian bag. So the Victorian bag is the star of this video along with two other smaller 
uh, bags that are coordinated with that as well. Love that white rose on there. Love the white rose. So watch this video and you can see one of Joe's creations come to life. Hi, it's Joe with Joe for Totes, and today I'm going to show you just one bag. Well, it's more than one bag, but it's just for one person. And these bags go to Deborah, who lives in Clarksville, Virginia. This is not the first, and it might be the third bag I've made from Deborah. In fact, I have to tell you that the last video I did for Jeannie, I mentioned that I was not going to be making bags after this year, probably. And uh, since that time, I've had like 10 customers that I've already made bags for send me a request <laughs> to make them one more bag. So, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this uh, little section here. But let me first show you this bag. So back in April of this year, I had a video that Jeannie showed and there were three bags. They were all 16 by 16 by 6 and one of them was a Victoria bag. And um, so when Debbie notified me, she had just seen this one and we had other plans for looking at other fabrics. But when she saw this bag in April, she said, that's the one I want. And I was able to find the identical fabric. So this is the bag she's getting. This is her medallion. And the, they're a little different. Uh, the main fabric is the same, but this fabric is a little different and then uh, we put mesh pockets on the side of hers for water bottles or, you know, whatever. She could put a phone in there as well. Here's the back, and she has a big zipper in the back. And the inside is got the same peachy rose color, kind of pinky peachy rose as, as that. She has, a, of course, a zipper pull, and this is her zipper pull charm for the, the big top zipper on the bag. And this is the scroll work that I put on her handles. It's hard to see that, I think. Um, but then on the inside of the bag, she also wanted a big zipper. And of course, so she got another little zipper pull for that zipper. And the inside has this really nice uh, color that is, is the exact match. I was just amazed that I found it as this color combination for this large kind of a golden rose on the front of the main fabric. And then on the other side, she wanted a pouch and she wanted two crochet hook sleeves. So there's two crochet hooks of mine that I put in there. I'll take those out so I don't mail them off with the bag, which I've almost done before. And then uh, this is her um, stitch marker tab. And at first she wanted two pockets on both sides, but when I tried to do the mesh that way, it just didn't turn out well. And so I emailed her and I said, what if we just do the one? And she agreed with that, but she'd already paid for two. So we agreed that I would just make her a couple of more little stitch, pretty stitch markers. And, and so that's what I did along with the ones that everybody gets in their bag. So this goes uh, out today. So what, uh, she also wanted was a zipper notions pouch and um, so this is her zipper notions pouch isn't that cute it matches the bag exactly and the inside has the same fabric as um, um, I don't guess I use the same fabric oh yeah as the front <laughs> of the bag <laughs> and um, then she has another of course little charm on that and I also put a bunch of my notions in here so you, you could see how much this holds plus I mean that was just a little bit of uh, my my uh, crochet hooks so this is part of her order just turned out so cute and then the next thing that she wanted was a, um, a drawstring bag to match and so this is her drawstring bag. Isn't that beautiful? And so I put some of my cakes in here so you can see how much this holds, which it really does hold a lot. So two of these. These are the sugar and cream. So I'm going to be making Christmas gifts out of those. And then two large mandala cakes. These are the watercolor. I don't know if that's important for you to know that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a pattern to make a granddaughter a purse for Christmas out of that yarn since I already have it. 
But this is the inside, which is the same as the front of her bag. And of course, these two are the same fabrics that I used on the bag as well. So that's her little drawstring bag. And it just, it, so all these three just turned out so cute and they just coordinate so well together. I just think it's a great way to do that. So uh, those go to Debbie uh, in West Virginia. So what um, I have decided to do about uh, making more bags is that I have about 16 more orders on my current list and I think that I can do about uh, 10 more uh, that will get me through the spring when I'll be working in my garden more and doing more things around my house that I need to do. I'm not saying that I won't ever make more bags, but I'm going to accept 10 more orders. So if you've wanted a bag for a while or you want a second bag, which is what I've been getting more lately, is repeat customers, which is a great thing. Um, and I enjoy because I already know these ladies to some degree. So you can just email me at joefortotes at gmail.com and it's the number four. And that's just how we start a conversation about the size you want, the fabric you like. Um, I've got two bags that are getting ready to be uh, cut out now that are going to be real special too. And I can't wait to show those to you. So until I see you next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes. Bye. Well, thank you so much for that video. Um, I love that Victorian bag. I'm just, I'm along with you. I really do like it. And that big white rose, very beautiful as well. And thank you for letting us know your future plans. It's important for us to know if we can get in touch with Joe, if we really want a custom bag. Um, I think there's a little bit of room left um, to get in line. So if you want to do that, be sure to take care of that right away. She gives you your, her email address in the video. So um, be sure that you use that address to uh, start a conversation with Joe. If you're interested in a custom project bag, all right, so I'm going to leave that there. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will be back on Monday, so join me again then, and let's find out what's on the hook.